go ahead and call the meeting to order. Appreciate everyone uh, being here. Inspirational moment. <clears throat> it is literally <clears throat> true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping others to succeed. Napoleon Hill. Jill Clarkson, introduce our program. Okay, thank you. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Tim Burcham, and he is the new director of the future Northeast Rice Research and Extension Center, and that was effective on August the 1st. Uh, this is the newest center for Division of Agricultural Research in partnership with the Arkansas Rice Research and Promotion Board. And this is going to be the hub of rice research for the Northeast part of the state. Now, prior to this new role, Dr. Bertram served as Dean of the Arkansas State University College of Agriculture. And at that time, that was a joint appointment to the Division of Agriculture. And as director, uh, Bertram will, uh, he, Dr. Bertram uh, is developing a master plan for the center. And this will include research uh, in the areas of unique, of, in the area's unique soils, as well as, you know, general education components. And he is overseeing, of course, the construction of the facility. So we are pleased to have Dr. Burcham um, let us know about this vital research and extension center that is so important to not only Northeast Arkansas, but I think the world too, because you know we are one of the greatest rice producers uh, in the country right here in um, our part of the state. So Dr. Burcham, thank you. Hey, Jill, thank you so much for letting me uh, visit with the club today. I love it, visiting with uh, Rotary Clubs. I'm a former Rotarian back uh, in my days when I was over at UT Martin. And I love this club. I've spoke to them in the, in the past on another subject. But uh, in this new position, I'm delighted to have been extended the opportunity to share with you. So President Higgins, and thank you for the invitation. And Jill, really do appreciate uh, the opportunity to share with you today. Let me see if we can get our uh, share screen uh, set up here so that we can uh, get moving. I'm going to try to share with, uh, with the screen that I'm looking at. So bear with me just a second while we crank up here and you guys give me some, some feedback. You know, we all been Zooming now for the better part of a year or actually over a year. So has everybody got a view of the slides now? Great. So I've got a ton of slides today and I want to make sure I don't, I don't want to slide you to death. But uh, and also, you know, I do come from a background where my dad was a Baptist minister and, you know, we've been shut up and locked up for a year. So if I get a little carried away, uh, somebody just reach out and grab me through the screen there. Uh, hopefully this timer that's running will, will keep us on track there. But I certainly want to try to respect your time. Let me say, as we're going through the slides today, and I've got, uh, there's a number of these where we're just going to be kind of flipping from one slide to the other because we're basically just giving you some different uh, views of that. But certainly want to invite you to ask questions and certainly feel free to uh, unmute your mic and ask a question right in the process as we're moving through the presentation today. So again, thank you to this club for letting me share with you today. So first of all, I'd love for you to follow me on Twitter. Uh, we also have a Facebook account, but we're at NEA, excuse me, NEA RK Rice. And uh, I posted early this morning, typically in my morning reading time, I'll try to put some posts from the activities that are going on, on at the farm. And I'd love for you to follow us there on Twitter. Uh, also, uh, the funding for this, I want to make sure, you know, you guys are all leaders in the community. Remember, I'm a former Rotarian, so I know who I know who's in the audience here. And I've spoke to some of those leadership Jonesboro class, uh, Will, that uh, in the past. And the only thing Will didn't mention there was he didn't say what was the best presentation they had during that whole leadership Jonesboro deal. And, uh, you know, I would have hoped that would have been Dr. Bertrand's presentation, Will. So just saying. You Did you give the presentation <laughs> at Rossland? I did. I thought so. I, I thought so, but I don't want to stick my foot in my mouth, but that was a fantastic presentation. Appreciate that. Hey, listen, folks, one of the things I want to make sure this group, because you are leaders in the community, is how are we funding, you know, what will be a probably $20 million investment into our region here? And, you know, we're just in the edge of uh, Poinsett County, uh, just across the county line down there. 
And the funding for this is coming from a uh, trade agreement with Colombia, the country of Colombia, which included a number of different things, but rice was one of the things that had a tariff rate quota. And that tariff rate quota put a quota on rice going into Colombia, and then all of the rice producing states in the United States received those funds, and then those funds have to be spent on research. And then as this promotion uh, deal uh, slides off toward its end, I think some of that goes toward promotion as well, so research and promotion. So Arkansas, as was mentioned earlier by Jill, since we produce half of the long grain rice in the United States of America, half of all of those quota dollars come to the Arkansas Rice Research and Promotion Board. And it's, so that is how they're funding this facility. You notice I've got the Arkansas Rice Checkoff uh, logo there, but we're not actually using any rice checkoff funds uh, to fund this facility. So rice checkoff funds are going toward the research activities that the university conducts and not necessarily to the construction of this facility. So an important point that I want you guys to help me uh, make sure that we get it right as we uh, work uh, here in our region. So today, uh, briefly, I want to share with you a little bit about the vision and mission of the station, our history to give you a little bit of the timeline here, uh, a reveal to show you the uh, rendi artist renditions and uh, conceptual drawings of the facility itself, and then some updates on some of the things that we have going on uh, currently. And then finish off just talking a little bit about relationships, because at the end of the day, the success of our facility will depend on the relationships that we have in our community here. When you look at our vision and mission, this was the first thing that I did when I took this position was to work with the board to develop a, a vision statement and a mission statement. Uh, we parsed out every word, particularly in this mission statement uh, and if you look at the definitions of each of these words, they all had impact. But it, our mission was to discover and develop innovative. And those that know me know I'm kind of a techie person. And innovation needs to be a, a component of, a, of everything that we do. So an innovative, efficient rice production practices using genetically diverse and adapted cultivars to maximize net return. That was a key thing for us because it's really what the farmer brings home and is able to use for his family and his livelihood that matters, not the money that passes through their hands. So net, maximize net return for Arkansas rice producers and to provide extension-based education and outreach to the public on the value of Arkansas rice in a sustainable ecosystem. And that latter sentence talking about the education and outreach uh, one of the things that the Arkansas Rice Research and Promotion Board really wanted to highlight in this particular uh, facility was education and outreach. And so we're actually in the process of hiring the education director, or the be called agricultural natural resource educator position on the extension side that will be this rice educator. So before we even get the facility done, we're making an impact on this mission statement by hiring a full-time person that will go ahead and start working on educational programs and highlighting the research and outreach that goes on throughout the division. When you look at the history of this facility, it's really a short history because the, the uh, division purchased this land in 2017. Again, it's just in the edge of Poinsett County. I'll give you a few little zoom maps in just a moment. Uh, 600 acres. Uh, the predominant soil type there is a Henry Silt Loam. And for those of you that don't know, uh, points that cross counties are now the epicenter of rice production in the state of Arkansas, the highest rice production counties. And this soil type is the predominant soil type for those areas. And the University of Arkansas Division of Ag did not have any experiment stations that had have this type of soil. Also, this farm has a 31 acre uh, surface reservoir. So water uh, needs, as you know, we're west of the ridge where groundwater is problematic. And uh, so that was another uh, distinguishing factor as well as the entire Western border is uh, uh, bounded by the uh, Languil River. So we're able to use surface water again for our crops. As we zoom in, there's Jonesboro and you can see the green line right in here. That's, uh, that is the uh, uh, Craighead and Poinsett County line. And then we'll just zoom on down and here's the farm itself. And for those of you that travel Highway 1, this is Rice Tech that I'm moving my mouse uh, around right here. Uh, this is Sentney Road, a little gravel road. And literally our farm is the next farm south of Rice Tech on the same side of the road. 
You can see the reservoir right here and the Lang Languil River again moves all the way down the western border here. So there's a, probably around 540 uh, tillable acres on this particular uh, farm. When you look at the facility location, we've already started the uh, shop uh, uh, facility and uh, there's construction activity going on ongoing at this time. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail in just a moment. There's a block of trees here. It's actually a bottomland hardwood. I'll uh, give you a little illumination on that from the educational standpoint. This is where we're locating the facility. So you can see we're right in the center of the property. As we zoom in there, you can see the entrance road comes in. You'll see the uh, little yellow lines here. <laughs> and that's our school buses that are coming in. So even the parking lot is designed from an aspect of being able to bring in uh, grade school children in particular and, and, and educate them with regard to rice production, uh, ecosystems, uh, wildlife associated, ducks in particular. There's a lot of great uh, symbiotic relationships between rice and uh, ducks in particular. So this is the section we're working on right now, which is the uh, shop facility. Let's do a little bit of reveal here, and I'll tell you that we've worked with two different architects, uh, the shop portion that is under, undergoing construction at this time uh, was done by Architects Plus. And then the uh, reveal photos uh, that I'm going to show you are by SCM Architects. And so they've done the, the line share of our conceptual drawings that I'm going to share with you. I should point out that on this uh, shop design, uh, uh, we have uh, Nabholtz, so uh, one of our lo local general contractors is doing that. So there, Emily, they're your neighbors right across the road from you there at the food bank. And again, I'll, I'll do a little shout out for Emily. If you haven't helped out with the backpack uh, program, I uh, encourage you to make a donation and uh, help out. And maybe you'll win that uh, Jason Aldean uh, four-wheeler and some things like that. So great opportunity for you to help out our community. And we appreciate you guys over there, uh, Emily, and what you're doing in our community. Thank you. The shop design, uh, just give you some schematics of that. Uh, we have switched this to a hip roof design. That was something that we were able to do with Nabholtz uh, to kind of re-engineer the original drawings. Uh, I, I just preferred that from a visual standpoint. Um, this just gives you a, a three-dimensional view of the shop. There'll, the fence is already up around that facility and there'll be a decorative fence placed on that once we build the main facility. From the shop standpoint, there's about uh, 4,500 square feet of interior space in the shop and then a 50 by 120 uh, outdoor storage shed for the equipment. And then one of the key things is this area back here is our chemical rinse pad. And I'll share some details that uh, we're excited about on some automation for the uh, chemical rinse pad. Got little uh, closets over here that are for the research scientists to store their smaller uh, allocations of chemicals and, and research uh, chemistries that they're using for crop protection chemicals. Let's them grab their particular items, move right over here to the uh, wash bay and do their mixing and then out to the field. Quick shot there. Interior space that's the living space of this is only 750 square feet. So we've got an office, a break room, a shower facility that's a multi sex uh, shower facility, and then just a tool room that will have uh, HVAC or heat and air associated with that. So now let's transition to uh, the uh, conceptual uh, drawings of the facility. And again, this was SCM Architects, in particular, Jason Ori is the architect that worked on these particular plans. So he was the main principal driver for these. When he looked at the vision, mission, and guiding principles that we provided for him, and we talked about the research, the outdoor adult, excuse me, adult uh, outreach, and then I talked about the K through 12 uh, outreach that was a primary consideration, as well as our digital outreach production facility. And here on this, I, I don't have time to talk about that, but all of us are all of us are doing what we're talking about there. In other words, we want our facility to be state of the art with regard to its ability to reach out throughout the world uh, with digital uh, work. When you look at the uh, overlay, you can see that we've got about a 15,000 square foot office complex with six laboratories. You have a 10,000 square foot public space here. And then also you have what I'm calling the rice discovery experience down here, which is what I'm calling a wet or dirty classroom for K through fives to come in. 
uh, pot their own rice plants. The greenhouse that adjoins this lets us bring rice plants at all different uh, growth stages into the facility as well. And you'll notice that that adjoins the kitchen that's, uh, that is a stage kitchen so that we can do cooking shows there. So excited about that. We're actually talking with the chamber about uh, developing an Aroma 17 rice trail for our region uh, as far as some dishes prepared with Aroma 17. For those who don't know, Aroma 17 is a jasmine uh, type rice that the University of Arkansas has bred and it uh, has excellent texture, ex excellent aromatic properties and excellent taste. Just a close up of the office complex and then the public space. This public space will seat about 250 people and probably half of that in its round table format. You notice we've left plenty of storage area for the tables and chairs. And so we look forward to hosting groups of that size. Jason, uh, with our heritage for the rice farm and farming in general in the Delta here, he, he built the design off of a silo concept that you can see in these uh, early renditions. And so it's a beautiful construct here. You can see the rice experience, uh, rice discovery experience here that's on the north end of the facility. And you'll note that the tops of each of those silos is actually glass and you'll see uh, some cool shots of that. Here's our, uh, again, that uh, uh, close up of that educational space there. And notice that we're able to come right out from the dirty classroom into this flex space where students will be able to taste rice from around the world. And if you don't know, rice is a substance crop for half of the world's population. And uh, one of the most heavily traded uh, crops around the world and, uh, and the opportunity to share and educate our students about different cultures around the world, really this sets us up for a great opportunity to do that because we can talk about rice, its impact in different cultures throughout the world. So excited about that opportunity. Let's take a look and now I'm gonna move quickly through these, don't wanna bore you guys, but these are the, the three dimensional renderings and we're gonna do a fly around around the facility just so you can get a, a sense in the scope of this uh, facility. Again, about 26,000 square feet and that's not counting the shop that would be under roof uh, upon completion. Now we're looking north. So just down at the, just north of those trees would be Rice Tech to help you orient yourself. And then now we're looking to the east, and that's Highway 1 right out in front of the facility. We're going to zoom in, and as you can see on the back side of that public space, we actually have it glass so that you can actually look out and see the rice crops that we would be, uh, be growing in this back area. So we're actually visualizing that as being a viewing portal where we can look at the different rice varieties that the University of Arkansas is developing. So that's a great opportunity there. Uh, Jason did a wonderful job in putting together a nice park-like structure between the office complex and the public space here. I, I hope when it, we get the real thing, Jill, that it looks even close to what he's got in this, uh, this beautiful computer-generated uh, uh, rendering here. It's gorgeous. As we go around here, I'll point out this over... Uh, this wooden crosswalk that goes here. And that's also a part of this education component that we're building in, particularly for grade school kids. So after we've talked about rice, had our activities in our classroom there, uh, take them in here and then we're envisioning a, another uh, open classroom out in this bottomland hardwood area where we can talk about wetlands and ecosystems and the impact of rice uh, on ducks and duck population, things like that. So it just gives us a great, uh, great uh, opportunity to extend that educational profile. As we come back around into the parking lot area here, this is, you see the end of the greenhouse as we're looking to this, looking south at the facility now. There's a front view. And then on the space, it, you'll notice you're gonna see donor opportunities here. And I just point out that everything we're doing is a public private partnership as we go through this. So we're seeking donors for naming opportunities throughout the facility. So as you drive up, as the buses would turn in in its current format, you see the metal side of these uh, silos that Jason has designed in. And there's the cool thing about these silos, RGB lighting in the top of those 
will allow you to change the color for whoever's meeting there. So if it was, if it was John Deere, it could be green and yellow. And if it was Case and IH, we could change those things to red for you. We can even have it red wolf red, Jill, for sure. Here's the front entrance. And you'll notice the silo at that front turnstile is taller than the other silos. And you'll see a stairwell here. And that's actually like a, a lighthouse stairwell that goes up to an overlook uh, that looks out over the backside of the farm. Another neat feature that Jason designed in is we're looking from the office entrance back toward the public space. You'll see that each of these meeting spaces, these small turnstiles out front, are glass on this side. And so really, really neat architectural design. They just did a wonderful job for us. As you come into that front entrance hall, again, a uh, uh, great place for us to, to show off all of the folks that are helping with the facility by making donations to the facility. Uh, there's that uh, lighthouse stairwell that goes up to the uh, overlook area. This is that overlook area. So that staircase empties out onto this uh, space right here. And we're basically doing that for, again, the K through 12 uh, kids to be able to go up there and look out over the farm because you're having, you have that same vista that you have looking out of the uh, uh, exhibition hall there. Inside the turnstiles, you'll notice that there's an open format down through there. So it just really creates a long foyer there. So you could do serving lines for food and activities there. You'll notice that each one of these uh, turnstiles also gives us a great opportunity for uh, donors naming rights in each one of those. And I think there's five turnstiles uh, total. Now we're taking a look inside the public space. Again, 250 people uh, is what we're planning there and about half that when you're in round table mode. Beautiful facility that uh, Jason did a great job with the design of this and the color selection. Really, really like this space. Notice that now we're looking out over the rice crop through the, what I'm calling the rice variety observation portal. And so another donor, donor opportunity there to name the, the uh, observation portal. I talked about that kitchen. And so notice that we're trying to put together a literally a chef's level kitchen where you can do cooking shows. You got two monitors up here that are facing the crowd. These double doors open to allow us to have seating for a small group to come. And we're uh, excited to host chefs throughout the region and how they're using rice uh, in their cuisine. Uh, so that's exciting. Here's that dirty classroom uh, that I'm talking about. And again, just a great place for our young people to uh, come and learn about rice in Arkansas and throughout the world. Now we're headed back over to the office space. Uh, Again, there are 12 offices in this particular uh, layout that we have, some open space in the center where we can put cubicles. And then we have six laboratories that will be available at this particular facility as well. We're actually probably in discussions right now about what the final number of laboratories needs to be there to match with the scientists that will have stationed there. Now to give you some real world updates, uh, the uh, shop building, I just mentioned that the job order contract for that has been let out and Navholtz, uh, one of our uh, home companies here in Jonesboro is gonna be our general contractor. So they've already started on the process of building the shop. Uh, I mentioned that sprayer segment in the back there. And this is the one of the items that uh, we've had a, a, what I'll call a, a 25% sale, in other words, uh, we paid 25 cents on a dollar. So there was a significant donation for this. This, this device right here will mix your chemicals up automatically and uh, deposit them in the sprayer system. And then it cleans the sprayer out automatically. It's really a neat system. So just to give you an idea of the timeline, everything is moving fast. We broke ground for that shop on the 28th. I'm just gonna flip through some pictures here. We went down uh, way below the soil level and started with our red fill material, uh, particularly under the foundational point uh, points of the, of the facility itself. Load after load of the red soil coming in at the facility and then load after load of the uh, crusher run rock that you would see if you head down there now. So you can see the opening for the foundation. It's ready to pour. And again, they are Navholtz is already moving in out there and starting to assemble some of their pieces and parts to start the uh, concrete foundation there. We did an elaborate entrance road there that was stabilized with number seven rock. Again, a very expensive option, but something that will hold up uh, with all kinds of weather uh, conditions. And there you can see today, that's the, an, uh, the view of the fence. Uh, 
uh, Dacus Fence to put our fence up. So again, another local company there and uh, excited about that. And there's just an aerial view. I don't have time today to share uh, the extensive GIS work that we've done there, but we have uh, flown with a drone uh, RTK surveys of the entire farm. So we actually can look at any elevation on the farm down to the square inch. It's quite remarkable, the technology that's available today. As far as equipment goes, our, we've got a couple of tractors on their way. Uh, so we're excited about that. Our mud master uh, for spraying operations has been delivered uh, this past week uh, from Fair Oaks. And again, all of these companies I'm mentioning are here in Northeast Arkansas. So we're excited to help support our regional economy. That's a, that's a greater blade from Fair Oaks and then a Fair Oaks uh, land plane. Uh, we dropped our relief pumps back in uh, this past week, so excited to see that uh, and uh, hopefully be able to get our water and our reservoir uh, completely topped off and be ready to irrigate crops going forward. The last thing I will leave you with and then be glad to answer any questions that you might have is the relationships. Uh, I mentioned that this is a public and private partnership, and we've been fortunate to to. Uh, uh, have some good donations moving forward. Uh, the uh, pumps for our irrigation system, uh, the uh, motors for the irrigation system have been donated, the variable frequency drives for the systems have been donated. I mentioned the uh, uh, that uh, system that's the sprayer system. We got that for 25 cents on a dollar. And so certainly uh, the private and public partnership that we're doing here, we continue to move forward in a fundraising mode and are excited about the future opportunities. I would tell you that uh, COVID is, has really put a damper on our fundraising component of this. I think the ability uh, to go down and visit with people face-to-face -face is something that you really want to do when you're doing a fundraiser activity, and that has been problematic for us uh, with COVID. So we're excited, Jill and Gary, as uh, hopefully some of our restrictions are eased and our situation with COVID uh, relaxes a little bit that uh, we're able to get forward and move into face-to-face -face interactions to visit with other potential donors that are going to support, hopefully, uh, the partnership that we have here. So again, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to share with you today. There's my email address. We've just changed uh, uh, to the University of Arkansas Division of Ag is our fundamental uh, UADA edu so all of the university of arkansas division of agriculture uh, emails are going to be transferred to this domain and all of our other segments will be using this domain my cell number is posted here so my old uh, tennessee cell number but still works so feel free to give me a call and at this time i'll be glad to take questions that you have and again thank you for the opportunity to share with you today Dr. Bertram, that's, that's a very nice looking facility. Can't wait to see that all completed and, and up and going. Very good program. So any any questions anybody have? What's the, you may have said this, maybe I've missed it. What What's the uh, timeline for opening this facility? Uh, we'll, we'll finish the shop up probably, I'm going to say it's, they, they're targeting August. So I've learned, uh, I've learned in our current mode where supplies is problematic to say this fall. <laughs> so the shop will be completed this fall. We're already housed down in the Greenfield Brown Rice. I didn't mention that. So we're that's immediately south of this property, like 200 yards south. So we're officed there right now, myself, Greg Simpson, and uh, Chris L uh, Lower, who is a research technician for us there. We are have been given approval to move forward with the architect selection for that conceptual design that you saw. So for example, SCM, will be one of the architects that bids on this particular job. So we've been given permission to do that. That is about a nine month to a year process, believe it or not, Will, to go through that. Because you're talking about, if I use today's dollars for that facility that I showed you conceptually, you're talking 13 to $15 million uh, for that facility. So, uh, but we, the because we're moving forward with that, it tells me that uh, the board and the division that we're ready to keep everything moving forward. So if all of that went well, we would be looking at a 23, 24, something like that for the, for the facility to be opened up because you'd have a, uh, the architectural phase and then you'll have the building phase that in my estimation for a facility of that type probably take the better part of two years. Good deal. Well, thank you for being with us today. It's my pleasure. And also, I'll Gary just throw out uh, 
we're happy to have guests down there. If you'd like to come and take a ride around, we, uh, we do have a four place, uh, uh, gator uh, now, and we'll be glad to take you around the farm, let you see all the different land leveling opportunity, land leveling uh, partitions and the farm, the reservoir, uh, where we're building that. So happy to have you as a, as a guest of our facility, and we'll practice uh, all the safe COVID measures if you come and visit with us. So I uh, want to extend a welcome to everyone. All right. We appreciate that. That's a great program. We can't wait to see that facility completed, and, and uh, it looks like it's going to be very nice. So it'd be, uh, be great to have in our, our community. And we'll adjourn until uh, next week. So y'all have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thank great you. Great job, Dr. Burcham. Thanks, Dr. Burcham. Appreciate it. <laughs>